my dear friends, there is a certain finality. Children, it is the last hour, and we are burying a year, a year which contains perhaps many years, for certain things happen in certain periods of our life which have a bearing upon all time. This is your case. We do well then to pause as we conclude these hours of 2012 on the fragility of our existence. Many come and go for only a few hours, days, months or years on this track of existence. Think of all the children who come and go, all the young people who die in midstream. We are still here for the time being. It was not the case, even in a generation not that far away from us, when people were deciding whether or not to go to the war. In fact, they all had to go in Britain unless they really had a good reason. And many did not come back. We are still here. Time. I have here a clock, which is actually quite audible, and it may help us to reflect on that. The sound of ticking is the sound of instants passing, trickling second by second into the beyond. A priest, as you know, sometimes has to help people into the beyond at the last moment or the last hours. And one wonders sometimes when one gives the sacrament of the sick, especially to a person who is losing lucidity, where will he or she open the eyes? of the soul in that case, and what horizons will that person see? For then, these tickings have a bearing. The instance of our time are the direction of our eternity. And we have quite a few stories of people, priests and others, who have done all so as to try and get those last ticking seconds of a living soul for God and not for the enemy of the soul. There is one film, classic modern film, which is worth looking at because it brings to bear the impact of death on a person that a good nun is trying to, as it were, redeem through her presence. It is dead man walking, person on death row in the States. This good nun, Sister Helen, is keen on getting his soul before he breathes his last in the electric chair by now, but a lethal injection. Interesting. That person, of course, does go, should have been a Catholic, but would not actually, it would seem, receive the sacraments, but did somehow get some warmth before he went, not at least dying in hatred. But how many die, not in any kind of preparation, but even perhaps in this night, the very night, in which people do spend it in all but grace, where they will come back from the pubs perhaps and end up just like that, in the beyond, in a road accident, without any preparation, and with all the consequences that time not well used can have. One thinks then of those who have gone this way before, those who have made a noise while on earth, and perhaps end up in a different state in the beyond, although we would sincerely hope that that not be the case, especially for those that we have been fond of, who have influenced us, decided people of whom only two are left, but one precisely of these did have a sudden exit, as we know. We only hope and pray that the Lord took into account the joy that he'd given to many people. This one also is no longer with us, but he had a karma death. In fact, we have on YouTube something that he said before dying of cancer. It is very interesting. They say that George was the quiet beetle, and when it came to death, he handled it actually quite well. And he compared earthly glory with the true issue. He talked of bliss. For him, it meant something that he'd been picking up in Eastern meditation, 
Nevertheless, it meant something to him, and he saw that the real issue was not what people thought. The other two are still around. I hope and pray that they too will get that. But I would actually just pause for a second on the use of time, because these people do, even though in the case of two of them no longer there, still speak. And the words that we leave can have a long echo. I was, not that long ago, praying to you a beautiful song that they had sung to young people, giving a message of not losing the one that is dear to them. You're going to lose that girl. Those were the days when messages still passed. Now we press buttons and we get incomprehensible words, lyrics so-called. There's been, I would say, a regression in culture, an absence of true beauty. It's rather sad, for culture is going down. This was, for some people still, a time when beauty was still possible, not through the pressing of buttons, but the creation of genuine beauty through harmony and authentic human talent. We we'll just pause then with what it is to leave something behind us. We leave a memory. As we are going through time, we leave ripples. If we create a new life, we create an immortal soul. We procreate with the collaboration of the maker. That's why the whole sphere of matrimony is not banal. It is ultra-sacred, for we are involved with creating immortal beings. That is hugely powerful. Hence it is that all that happens in that sphere should never be bracketed with the profane and the dirty. It is something angelic and an expression of the life of the Trinity itself in which we are caught up. The whole universe speaks of love. Why? It has come from that circumincession of the divine life of the Trinity. It is all one circular movement of divine love, and we are caught up in it, and it is in that context that we create more love, more bliss for heaven. For a new soul awakened to live and to die and to go into the beyond is a new participation in ecstasy. That is why, if a person decides to opt for the vocation of marriage, it is a sublime way to sanctity. And every moment of that union has to be, again, a re-echoing of the song of love of the Trinity. And no harsh words should be permitted. It is too sacred. Because creating a family is to create a little cell, a domestic church in which Christ is in the midst, and if that is the case, consequences follow. Harsh words are avoided. We do not take each other for granted. It can happen even after marriage, as we know that we can lose that girl. Many marriages even actually come here on the rocks, some big time, beating and so on, going on. It's very sad when that promise to love and to cherish becomes quite the reverse. Expertise in calling, causing pain. So we conclude, let's ask for this grace to live well this year coming ahead when a new family will be established and when grace will flow in the parallel veins of two souls living the divine life and wedded in that divine harmony of authentic and divine love.